Startup Hero. Turn your business ideas into reality. I came to Dubai with a backpack. The region's online business guru. Fortune Magazine's 40 Under 40 listed him as one of the most influential young people in business. I believe the mindset is the number one success factor in life. I don't actually believe that entrepreneurship is some kind of a risky adventure. There is actually a very clear process on how to mitigate those four risks you're looking at, which is market risk, product risk, team risk, and finance risk. And once you're really convinced of your idea, it's all about taking big decisions fast. Make your product as simple as possible. Entrepreneur Magazine titled him as undoubtedly one of the youngest and most successful internet entrepreneurs in the Middle East, while Gulf Business puts him as one of the top 10 entrepreneurs in the region. Saygın Yalçın bizimle birlikte. Saygın Yalçın konuğumuz. Well, I'm with Mr. Saygın Yalçın. Sayın Saygın Yalçın. Saygın Yalçın var. Saygın Yalçın. Saygın Yalçın. Saygın Bey, merhabalar. Saygın Yalçın. Ismim Saygın Yalçın. Startup Hero. Your chance to get an investment from millionaire entrepreneurs. Apply now at StartupHero.com. My name is Mohamed Shabib. I'm co-founder and CEO of Tajawal. Uh, we are the fastest growing online travel company in the MENA region. When you come up with an idea, test it with as many people as you can. So discuss that, you don't hide it, no matter what you think. So my advice is share with as many people as you want. and. Uh, improve continuously what you are designing and what you're developing before you roll it out. And once you roll it out, test it even more. So gather feedback as much as you can and uh, just see yourself at level one out of a hundred levels at least. Um, so see yourself in, uh, as a student that is learning and learning and continuously developing him or herself as well as the product and the team. And if you, if you understand that, there's a high likelihood that you will probably be successful in a, in a startup environment. Startup Hero. Your chance to get an investment from millionaire entrepreneurs. Apply now at StartupHero.com. Welcome back, guys. Today, we are here with the first episode of Startup Hero. And we have our friend here. What's your name? My name is Sina. Sina? Yeah. Where are you from, Sina? I'm from Iran. Iran? Yeah. And what is your idea you would like to present today? All right. My idea, actually today I'm here to help solve a problem. My idea is something which is very personal to me and it could have helped me in the time that I really needed it. Why not make it myself? The problem is over 300 million people on earth suffer from depression. It's becoming a huge epidemic. By 2020, depression will be the second cause of disability after cardiovascular disease. What if we could help with that? What if all they needed wasn't medication? Was it, what if it was just a friend? I want to present to you the diary. I think there are a lot of people going through a lot of hard times that all they need is somebody to talk to. Did you go through depression? I think in all of our lives, we go through some phases which bring us down. I also personally went through a phase that I had, I had people, I had a lot of people, that I had friends. But sometimes maybe you're shy. How is this different to uh, a forum? Yeah. Okay. Will there be trained psychologists? Of psychiatrists, will there be any business around it? Yeah, sure. Tell right. me about. It. What I want to do, my idea was an app. See so now, what's your progress so far? What have you done so far? Yeah, what I've been doing, I've been having, I've been writing down the features that could this app have. How much would you require for it? For an app like this, I've talked to companies. The company that I talked to, they told me it will cost around 100 to 150 thousand dollars. To develop and to host for yeah, yeah. a for certain period of, of time. Yeah. Do you have a co-founder? Sorry. I'm sorry? 
Do you have a co-founder? I do have a co-founder. Saying right there. Yeah. Why is he not presenting? Because well, I, I talk better. <laughs> you talk better. Yeah. What if I told you there are already ready-made forums and tools and plugins you could use, which will probably not cost you more than fifty dollars? Exactly. To prove your concept. Yeah. Okay. There are forums you can go, but this is easy. It's just an app. You click on it. You're in distress. You, you need somebody to talk to you right now. You click on the app. You record your voice. Just you just type it. I suggest one thing. You should create your MVP, which is the minimum viable product, something okay. which proves your concept. All okay. these voice recordings. A nice to haves. You yeah. don't. You don't need exactly, that now. Yeah. You need to prove your concept. That means you can go with ready-made products. You won't need to give out any equity in your company to do that. Okay. Just prove the concept. Build a community of only a thousand people. Okay. Okay. And show us that this can work. All right. Don't spend more than five hundred dollars on this. Okay. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even spend anything more than that if you don't see the traction coming in with your basic product. The, the nice to haves will not prove your concept better than anything than, than the basic product, right? Exactly. So research a bit more, just buy forum plugins and tools, okay. right? This will help you prove the concept. If you want an app, you can even build apps for $50. There are ready-made apps you can use. Okay. And with that, if you can then show us that this is working, then think about investing more and scaling it and having your own in-house IT team on that. All right, sure, yeah. That's what Good I would first, suggest. Yeah. If you need help, you need uh, recommendations on which plugins and which uh, that would be developers you use, I can send it to you. All right, that would be amazing. That would be a great help. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sina. Thank you. The next much. time you present with your partner. Sure. Startup Hero. All right, thank you very much for coming. Please uh, introduce yourselves and the idea so we can start from there. Well, this, uh, I'm, my name is Omar Mali. I'm from United Arab Emirates. Uh, we started a commercial portal, which is like already, mm -hmm. ready that to start moving to work with it. So the setup is ready. We're looking for an investor to start the operation straight away. So the idea, it's a portal, commercial portal. It's a commercial portal about? It's a uh, totally new idea for the cl classified. Okay. With the 3D ma map. Uh, what is the give the dedicated information for the every single building all the map is growing by hand we have a samples and uh, the main idea also we are bringing uh, all services whatever you can imagine under one umbrella so we are bringing 172 services under one hub and you said you're already live with the portal we are not live the portal are ready, ready to test ready, yeah. ready to launch basically. Yeah, yeah, yes ready. Okay. But first one, we need a three months as a testing period, try to crash at maximum. To, to see how does it work yeah. and if there is and anything. Like so I ask you about your unique selling point. What is the thing that makes you different? See, the, our, <coughs> we are we're f focusing on the services more. Yani, the, see, the property now, everyone is trying to be in the property because it's the main business that it is built around. So selling, renting. No, we're going to go to the services. How many one bedroom for sale? How many two? How many three? Same information for rent. You have information if some same flat giving through two or three agency. You get it straight away. So it's. Uh, so now we have got. We have got. That's manual entry? Yes. So you, how big is the team? Sorry? It's a big team. We team? were working more we than think one we're gonna hour. Start oh, sorry, more than one year we were working. More than that, yes. Yeah, well, nearly year. two years right now. Okay. The property. And how much investment are you looking for? It starts from 3 million. 3 million dirhams. The first year. The first year of course, yes. The yes. The How do you split the investment? Huh? 3 million will go into what? What areas? No, uh, no. Uh, 3 million. So now we already has been spending money around 1.2 mm -hmm. million. We build up the sites. And let's say tomorrow you get office. 3 million. What would you do? We're going to get our team to start. So you would hire people? We're going to hire around maybe 8 people. Yeah. Uh, first of all, 8 yeah. people are going to come over here to set up the business, to, st to, to, to uh, test the uh, system. When the 90, from 60 to 90 days, we're gonna be ready to launch. Okay, I have two pieces of advice. The first one is when you explain the product, well, first of all, I don't understand the product fully. Yeah. It's not crisp. Okay. I think you're swimming a little bit between yeah. a couple of concepts, okay? Yeah. 
That's one. If you need to show, then something is wrong. You need to be able to talk about your product in 15 seconds and people should understand it. I'm talking about the market, not even investors or friends or service providers, because you will go out and acquire companies and you will acquire customers. These two need to understand your concept within literally 10 to 15 seconds. And not only understand, but also be, become excited. I think that's, that's the first thing that I would talk about. And the second thing is the commercialization. Out of experience, a couple of businesses as well in the online world, the moment you um, teach people that they don't have to pay for your service, it will become difficult to make them pay at one point. Until you can monetize, you need to build market power. When you have market power, that's when you can switch to monetization and people will pay. Until you get there, I expect people to want to have it for free. They will not pay for it unless you have market power. When you are at the level where you have a massive audience, then you can start charging. So what it means is there will be years until you can monetize. And it will be expensive. So that's out of my experience. I suggest you should relook at your business plan and see if the three million will be enough. Mm -hmm. Because uh, also look at the scalability of the aspects or if you can really go through every single business and building to actually not only enter it, but also keep it updated. Yeah. So if you find a way to make it scalable, meaning maybe automated, maybe make it user generated, something which basically does not involve your team all the time to be on top of that, that will make it obviously uh, a potential to be a profitable company. Um, I don't think there is a path to profitability if you have to do it in-house, everything, keep it updated and actually have everything covered and build market power until you can start charging. Not even 100 dirhams, probably you have to charge more to make it profitable. Startup hero. Ha! <laughs> it's your idea. Hmm. <laughs> That's my idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. So the idea. So what's your name? Raed. Raed. Raed Rashid. Right. Okay. What's your idea? Well, uh, based on sell any car, mm -hmm. and in order to make it easier to sell your car, so what about spare parts? Okay. You know, if you want to buy any spare parts, you have to go somewhere to industrial areas, search for it, to find it, then you will buy it. So the idea is to create kind of platform. How does the model work? Do you uh, just, do you have a catalog where you own these products or will that be a listings page? Well, uh, that's uh, also uh, one of the ideas. Uh, the, uh, the products will be listed uh, per CRM where you can filter based who on- who owns the products? Sorry? Who owns the product? Uh, we will not own anything. It will be just a communication platform where the owners of those products the sellers will post their parts in, a, in an organized way on our platform where it will be visible to consumers. The consumers, we, as we said, we will have three product, uh, three types of uh, consumers and customers, garage and enterprises. Uh, so there is no capex involved. It and the sellers are business sellers or consumer sellers as well? Uh, both of them. Both? Both of them. Uh, we, will, uh, we will not have any capex involved because simply we will be reselling services of other people. I What's just, your progress so far? Uh, my progress? What have you done so far? I have the platform. I don't do have you, it. Do I, you own this domain? No. Okay. You can buy it. <laughs> Is it available? Uh, yes, I think. And definitely if you want to change the domain. So why didn't you buy it? I was just checking for fun. I, seriously, I don't know how to answer it. Me neither. That's the problem. Maybe you should do a bit more about it, more details about this idea, and then we can discuss about it. Because it sounds, it sounds like a model which is no, a no-brainer in terms of the selling. There is no risk about it because there, uh, there's definitely risk in this business. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But I'm, no-brainer, I mean, is there's nothing revolutionary about it, and it might work. But I would like to see definitely more than the idea. And if you're serious about it, I would have spent the $9 to buy the domain if it's still available. All right? Um, any questions? No, I think that's it. Yeah. All right. 
You have work to do. <laughs> Start up hero. All right. Uh, thank you for coming. What, what's your name? Uh, Reza and Bardia. Yeah, my name is Reza Maghani and he is my son, Bardia Maghani. Yeah. Yep. So my father came up with this idea and I will be, we will be talking about this idea which is based on the idea of receipts. So receipts, some people keep them in their wallets, some people keep them in shoe boxes. Most people are frustrated with keeping them organized. It gets worse when you're looking for this one particular receipt as you go through piles of paper receipts. These paper receipts are messy, they're a hassle to deal with, and they make it difficult to keep track of your expenses. So you're probably wondering what is this app and what is, this, what is the purpose and what does it do? So our application is called the Handybook app. Handybook app solves your problems. From now on you can ask the store to use the Handybook beacon, which I'll explain how the beacon will work and why we chose this technology. Just tap your phone to the Handybook beacon and the receipt will be automatically, automatically sent to the app. This keeps all your receipts organized. You can search by the date, by the store, by amount, or any other information for easy retrieval when you, when you need a particular receipt. It is easy and amazingly convenient. One day, me and my father uh, wanted to go fix my headphones. We go to the store and we go to their customer service. The first question they ask us is, where's your receipt? We say, well, we bought these headphones four years ago and, and it was an expensive headphones and I really wanted to get it fixed. They ask me, what's your receipt? We wait for five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 minutes. 30 minutes we wait until we get an actual response. We get a response from them and I said, what's up? So is my headphones gonna get fixed? They say, uh, well, we have a store upstairs, another one, so go check there. We go upstairs, their partnered store, and we wait there for 45 minutes in line. And it was a new store and there was many people there. It was famous. We wait there 45 minutes and the man tells me, where did you buy this? I said, from the store downstairs a long time ago. He says, why don't you go this from the stores down there? Why don't you check there? I said, I just checked there. And they told me to come up here. So they told me they can't get, and they told me, well, check there again. And I said, I give up. I don't care. I'll just go buy, I'd rather buy another headphones. Some could say, oh, but I could just take a picture of it and put it on my phone, it would take hours, it might take a long time until you find that receipt and find that picture. And the thing is, you might have photoshopped it. It's, the store doesn't know that where you took this picture. It might be photoshopped, but the thing is, if it was in the Handybook app, you would not be able to change the visual image of the receipt. One question, so, I guess this whole expense tracker or receipt tracking yes. apps already exist. What I really, um, would like to know is, is the USP that you have a tie up with the store that they accept this type of proof or is it just another expense tracker? No, we would try to build upon the, that they, they would accept the type of proof and we would want them to accept the receipt. So we're talking about a sales job first, you have to go to every single yeah. big brand. It's and a, we're, in in we're in the research yeah. and production of, and development of that, we're still in the process. The next annual year, we'll, pro we'll want to probably launch. Well, that will be exactly my advice. Don't go into another expense tracker or another yeah. way of yeah. Yeah, exactly. uh, managing receipts. That I believe that problem has been solved. Yeah. If you can localize it, make it accepted by big brands, that's I think when the whole interesting part starts. But that's also something I would like to see first. Like if you yeah. can get three or four big groups to join this and accept this, that's basically when I would say. Yes, yes. We'll that's what we would like again. to do, yeah, go to the big brands and get the approval if they would want this system and if they would want this technology in their brands. Yes. From there. Thank Thank you. You very My much advice is go first to the brand and ask them what would make their lives easier yes. and do a small survey of 30 people you know, yeah. in addition to your experience, yeah. and try to match that. Yeah. I Thank think you. this is what will make it work. Thank, Thank, you, so Thank, much. You. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Startup Hero. What's your name? My name is Mina Samuel. Mina, hi. Yes, hi, how are you? Good, thanks. So tell me about your idea. All right. Uh, my idea uh, is basically, it's called mazadat.com. In Arabic, mazadat means auctions. And what makes this different than any regular auction website, such as eBay or any of these websites, is basically to bid, you need to have bidding credits, which you purchase 
and once you purchase them, that's how you're allowed to bid. Every time you bid on an item, instead of increasing the amount according to how much you select, no. Every time you bid, the price increases by a fixed amount, which is of a very small value, and hence allowing you as the auctioneer to provide the item at up to 90% lower than the market value. How? You start the auction by small amounts. The incremental value could be as low as one fills per bid. But if that, that bid costs 50 fills, for example, by the time it reaches... Yeah, I know that concept. Let's say you want to sell something that's worth 200, 200 X. You have 50 people bidding, one bid each. Each bid costs, let's say, one, right? It means you already made 50. Yes. That's what I'm saying. From 50 different people, if the thing is 200, you made a loss. And there is right? obviously a risk. If the bid price was four, then you are break even. Yes, so... So your bid costs money? The yeah. bid costs money. I've seen this concept 10 years ago, to be honest, in Europe. Yes. And they stopped it at one point. At one point, it stopped. There Why? are a lot of businesses that failed. Uh, there are lots of challenges to it. And going, reviewing their business case and the models and everything, I was able to identify a few error points or a few so what downfalls. Are they? What is it that went wrong? Uh, basically, their calculation methodology. I'm not convinced because I think if someone pays something, they want to have the certainty of what they get afterwards. I think that might be one of the breaking points. But wh what do you think? I'm pragmatic. I think there's a lot of smart people out there, and if 100 companies tried to do the same model and they failed, there must be a problem with the model. And you said two things. One of them is they didn't calculate properly, which I doubt. If there's 100 people, I don't think 100 people are dumb people. Um, and the second thing is they didn't deliver. And I think this is another flaw. Like if you want to purchase items to sell, if you become a retailer, then you will have working capital requirements and capex requirements, etc., that are extraordinary. If it's a market, a C to C marketplace, um, then it falls under the first category of people failed in this model for various reasons, and probably then delivery and reliability of people is one of them. Startup Hero. Welcome to Startup Hero. What's your name? Atarba Manjraker. Welcome. Yeah. Thanks for taking the no time. Problem. Thanks Share for your ideas me. with us. Sure. This is Saigen. Yeah. And mm -hmm. my name is Mohammed. Nice to meet you. And we're very excited to uh, hear about your idea. Yeah, I'm excited to be here. <laughs> kind of nervous. Go ahead. Nervous? Don't be nervous. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, so the idea that I had was, so nowadays, like, there's a lot of, you know, people my age, like in the teenagers, they're very lazy, so they don't work out much, you know, they're getting fat and all that. And nowadays, recent launch, there was a game called Pokemon Go. So, like, I've seen all my friends, you know, they're on their phones, they're just around the place, hunting Pokemons, you know, walking kilometers away. So then that made me think, then what if there was a fitness app that could actually reward you for the stuff that you do? So then I thought about an app in which um, you just put in your, just create an account so that with your basic information, name, date of birth, etc. So then you put in your age and you put in your BMI score. So in that, that machine will determine whether if you're a normal weight person, if you're an obese person, or overweight. So according to that, they'll like give you a program of workouts. So in that case, uh, example, if suppose, according to my BMI score, I'm a little overweight, say, I think 25 is the score, but person's overweight. So then if I say I, on the time period of 30 days, I'll have to work out 15 minutes per day. So then on completion of every day, like suppose one day I do 15 minutes workout, I get a certain amount of points. Then again, next day I keep, I finish my workout, so a certain amount of points. So at the end of 30 days, the points that I've accumulated, I can then redeem it for a gift voucher or probably a nice coupon for the favorite place you want. So the app that helps you is that it makes you, it like helps you maintain that kind of consistency, which is very important if you want to get fit. How do you make money? How do you make money? Uh, advertisement. If I work out, I need to carry my phone. Yeah, it has to be with you. Like probably, you know, like, the, like an armband, you know, you have it in your pocket. Mm -hmm. So the phone, it'll be highly sensitive and highly calibrated, so you can't fool it, you know. 
So it, you have it'll be on track. It'll keep track of every single step that you take, every single you know movement, your intensity, your pace, your heartbeat rate. What makes you unique? Because I know at least 20 of these app providers. No. If you go to the app store, just look for yeah, probably. fitness app. You see probably 100. Do what you, makes you unique? Because the app it rewards you. I mean, I don't I don't think I've seen any apps that can you know. So the rewarding bit is your unique factor. Bit, yeah, I mean, huh? if you if you think that you know working a little bit can get you something, so you can use that as a motivation. Can I mean, you mix it with some virtual reality, which makes it more, I think, interesting? If you could actually collect data of people using your app, they don't have to work out, they just move. While moving, you collect data. You could actually build a mapping system with that. That can be made, but yeah, I mean, there's, it's more fun when you actually go out there and you know you work out on your own, the classic way. So you make it a fitness app? It's a fitness app, yeah. No, I don't like it. My humble opinion, Think about something different. Not different in terms of a completely different thing, just a tweak where I see you can collect valuable data. Because the, the, the fitness app is all about movement and pictures. That's how I see it, virtual reality. If you could collect pictures of people's movements, right? You could have so much valuable data, much beyond these coupons and, and, and just uh, whatever the other fitness trackers are already doing. Use the fitness part of it to collect data, valuable data. Sure, that can be added on. Not that as an add-on, as a core of your business. Okay, sure, sure, I'll keep that in mind. All right, yeah. thank you very much. Startup Hero. Thank you for being here. What's your name? Akif, Akif Imtiaz. Akif, Akif. What's your idea? Well, uh, it basically, a search engine for all the salons, spas around UAE as of now, uh, so that if you can, uh, the, the the logic is to get the best uh, available rate available in the market for any kind of treatment you require. Uh, it's just like basically the Booking.com of spas and all that. And the important thing is that all the all the vendors like the beauty owners can get exposure to the whole market as well as the customers can know that what's cheaper, like what's the best price and what's uh, what's available at the moment. Because usually at peak peak season, like during weddings and all that, it's high time. It, you, you, people usually don't find good. Uh, How did you get this idea? Uh, okay, uh, when I was watching uh, one of your videos and you were saying that an idea is something which can solve a problem. So I was just looking at it and like my, my wife was on, like, on a, like beside me and she was like, what you're watching? And I, I just asked her regarding your makeup thing, do you have something like like uh, makeup search engines or something. They're like, no, it's just that we know someone through like word of mouth, we, we come to know that, you know, uh, they so-and-so uh, be beautician who, who they go to. And that's how it gets done. How many bookings do you plan to have in the first year? Well, actually I've asked like one or two uh, salons. They said, yeah, it, it would be good if something such thing is there. It would uh, give them an exposure as well, as well as the customers. So you don't know? I know, actually no, sorry. I, it just generated as I said. Uh, I didn't know I would get a call from you guys. But Okay, and in I terms said. of the, do you require investment for this? Well, the whole, uh, actually, it's just an idea to be honest, but I don't know how this thing works. Like in my family and, and like all my mom's brothers, mom's brother, dad's brothers, sisters, Nobody has ever done such like thing in their life, so it's just an idea, and uh, I think it has a potential if certain, uh, if the right people get together and make it work. So then, the first things you need to do is decide: Do you want to become an entrepreneur? If yes, you sit on the idea, yeah. you evaluate it, and there are certain ways you can actually do that. Once you do that, then you talk about numbers. Before you even talk about anything else, you talk about numbers. Would you be willing to resign from your job to do this? Uh, the answer is no. No, exactly. But Why? Uh, because you don't know whether this can be successful at all. Yeah. So to answer it, I think it can work, but I don't know if it's you. And you don't know either. It's not, yeah. The idea is not bad, not at all, but it needs work.
Like it needs a lot of like research and checking with everything. research and numbers. There's no num you haven't told me any number. Startup Hero. Jerry, welcome to Startup Hero. And um, we'd love to hear your idea. All right. So um, my idea was about um, uh, hats. And um, I know a lot of people wear hats. And what I wanted to do is um, have a hat that you can change the peak color. So you have a hat that the peak is removable. And if you want to change it to a color that will match your outfit, and you can do that. Well, the hat will have a price, but the picks will have their own price. Let's say if you want to represent your team and you want to represent your country flag or you want to just have a color that you like to wear for the day, you can just remove that peak and put another peak. Actually, I don't have any um, business background. I just have the idea. But I just had, you know, I drew a, a small concept last night. Uh, it's just a hand drawing. I'm not a good drawer, so I'll show it to you. If, I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we call a minimum viable product definition. Minimum. At its best. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Let me see it again. You just made, uh, my, sure, yeah. you made my day. So what is that exactly? So it's a hat. So you can see on the right hand side. What is that on the right you, side? No, it's actually uh, on your left. What is that piece? That's the piece you yeah. can remove? Yeah, that's the front piece that you can remove and have different colors of that. Either you need to draw better. Yeah, I, I'm not a good please, drawer. Please show, me, please show me one example. I don't know where to go to have one made. Or I can have someone, you know, draw the concept better. Look, this is where I could help you. Mm -hmm. There are already marketplaces like Alibaba or Global Sources mm -hmm. where you can find a lot of manufacturing companies who can at least okay. send you a sample. That sample okay. will cost you a bit. Obviously, it, may, it might even cost you $100 because it's just one piece. But okay. then you might test out five or ten of these manufacturers and see which ones mm -hmm. can actually get close to what you want. With that, okay. I would then go and pitch your idea not only to potential investors, but also to your circle and see how they react to it, right? Okay. And with this, okay. with this initial progress and momentum, you come mm -hmm. back and show us numbers and say, look, I produced this for this much. If I could scale this up, I could actually... Uh, improve my unit economics and actually you know what i sold out within the first three days or whatever it is okay. and i believe okay. i could then scale it to a hundred thousand pieces a month if you could give me okay. x amount of money for this and okay. startup hero so thank you very much for not being here <laughs> yeah so yeah, where, where, are you, where are you guys and what's your names in holland in in the netherlands my name is lou nice to meet you and uh, my name is hisham abdul Abdul. Nice meeting you. So, um, yeah. tell us about your ideas or idea. Yeah, my, yeah, my idea is uh, quite simple. Like, I give you an example. Like, uh, if you have children, you want to let them grow up and get addicted to uh, 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 unhealthy money, so it's not good for the brain and not good for your heart and your body. Or you want to get your children to get addicted to uh, healthy mayonnaise and it's really good for your heart and for your brains and it's it's you know, it's good for you so do you want to produce healthy chips yeah healthy chips healthy mayonnaise but we're innovating on all the popular unhealthy food and our mission is to make food healthy again have you tried your business model already like have you done anything around it uh, yeah, we we have, we have developed like uh, five healthy mayonnaise, and it comes like with pumpkin and with uh, we replace the oil with 80 percent, and we replace it with healthy kinds of stuff like pumpkin, uh, cauliflower. When you say we develop, what does it mean? Do you have the recipes, or do you produce stuff already? No, no, I don't. Uh, we don't produce stuff already. Uh, this is our idea. 
and uh, now we're also talking with more people and it uh, comes bigger and more people believe in our uh, product. You haven't produced it yet, so how would it taste? I mean, uh, it tastes like when you have the pumpkin mayonnaise, it tastes like mayonnaise. The structure is the same like mayonnaise, only on the background you taste a little bit the sweetness of the pumpkin, nothing more. How it, do you, how do you know? It's better because I tasted it. So it, we, exi like, it exists like, already? Yeah, we've been like developing it for five months and make the chains that make calls with uh, great chefs around the world. Uh, Ask them how they would do it, and uh, we developed now five healthy mayonnaise with all great taste, but still you taste like like mayonnaise. So I suggest one thing: you ha you ha you said you haven't produced the product yet. Produce some, no. do some samples, and go to those potential clients you have and see what their reaction will be. And you you mentioned yeah. supermarkets. You mentioned probably small specialized boutiques who are selling healthy products see how they react and from yeah. there on we can talk like what i'm saying this is a great idea but we don't know how the market will react so to reduce yeah. your market risk just conduct interviews but with a minimum viable product you need that sample because we need to know how it tastes how the people will react to it okay. guys thank you very uh, much please Please come back to us with feedback of your potential clients and yeah. also a sample so we can know how it actually really tastes. And from there on, you will get better insights into your numbers. Startup Hero. Turn your business ideas into reality.